Blackhawks number seven, written by Mike Costa, art by Carlos Urbano and Carlos Rodriguez. We left off last issue with the Blackhawks base being bombed from the inside by someone named Matteo Bischoff. And this issue, oh, and uh, what's his name? Wildman, caught in the blast seemingly. So that's important to note. This issue picks up 18 months ago, a flashback to when I think it's Attila? Kanoichi, sorry, their names all blend together. When Kanoichi and Wildman first met, because of course they were lovers in the book. And apparently she called for like someone from IT to come down because her AC wasn't working and the mechanics couldn't figure it out. So she's lying in her room practically half naked. Wildman comes in, fixes it in a second, and just like, oh, well, nice to meet you, man. Hubba, hubba. And she's like, mm, he's cute. And then we cut to now, he's dead. He's, he's dead. He, he definitely died. So Kanoichi is crying over his body, and they say how there were only seven casualties, or, sorry, seven support staff casualties, five, like, members of the Blackhawks, like, general staff, and then Wildman. He died. And also one reporter. But regardless, uh, Lady Blackhawk has severe injuries. And everybody's really, really, really shaken up. But they all really, really want revenge. So Attila and Irishman, who are out on the field trying to gather info, they hear about this. They double down their efforts and start beating up everybody until they find info on Matteo Bischoff. Uh, after 36 hours, they get an incredible amount of intelligence that basically says, yep, he's definitely responsible, and here's his exact location. And he is a weapons fabricator. He has legitimate business holdings and political influence in Finland. And so despite the fact that he is a legitimate business owner, the Blackhawks team is all packing up, ready to go kill him. And so this is all written in like a letter from Lincoln March to his superiors. And he's like, if you guys don't like that I'm doing this, consider this my resignation letter. But regardless, we're going to go kill that guy. Bye. So the team fly in on their jet and there's a whole bunch of ground support of like security guards and whatnot but they're like oh we're going in through the sunroof so whatever so they bomb a hole through the top of the roof and then jump down onto it and it's basically just an extended fight scene from this point um they're firing off electrocuting bullets and kanoichi points out like hey i know these things are supposed to be non-lethal but like what if they give the people a heart attack and then lincoln's like well it senses their pulse so if their heart ends up stopping from it it'll give them another jolt to start it back up again so just so we know they're not killing the innocent people who are genuinely just working at a business so they go through and there are two smaller jets now that they're flying uh i think lincoln's on one and i for canada's on the other so they're flying around, but Canada gets too low to the ground and takes some damage to one of his ships, so he's already a little bit out of the fight. Kanoichi runs through. Their systems immediately went to lockdown as soon as they started attacking, so Kanoichi jacks in with her nano sites and finds out exactly where um, Matteo is, and they're like, all right, two floors down, let's go. And they start making their way through. Lincoln tells Canada, hey, man, you got to bail because your plane is, like, literally about to fall out of the air. And he's like, nah, right now there are drones on me. We got to take care of those. So they start shooting the drones. As they make their, as the ground team makes their way in to Mateo, it's, I think, Irishman and Attila. Um, they're both attacked by a group of nanosites. But because Kanoichi already has nanosites, she's pretty much immune. So she makes her way farther down the hallway. And she runs into Mateo's room, and he's just sitting there at his desk like, Ah, so nice of you to come. And she runs at him and then just hits a wall of glass, which is apparently very, very tough. Not unbreakable, but just unbreakable enough that it'll be too late for her to do anything about the noxious gas that's filling the room. But don't worry, it isn't poison. It's actually more nanocytes. Because of course it is. So he apparently... He apparently made the discovery of that, like, computer city that was however ago and he was like trying to study them and make like he he learned about all their wonders and thought that he could be their ally but then one day they stopped talking to him and he thought that the blackhawks must have done something against them which of course they nuked them from orbit so yeah that was fair 
but they he thought all of their technology is now gone but it's not it still lives on inside of Konoichi so now he's going to use his own nanosites to control the nanosites in her and fully unlock that technological capability and he's going to use her as his, use her as his own living weapon to kill her team so meanwhile Canada is literally like he's just basically flying a paper airplane now there is no control on this thing at all but he's trying to steer it to become essentially a kamikaze plane and he crashes down on top of the office of mateo which doesn't kill him he, he barely misses but mateo is knocked on his ass and then canada kicks him in the face and as canada gets out of the ship which he somehow survives i it makes no effort to explain that at all but he comes out of the plane and he's like kanoichi are you all right and kanoichi's like Yes, dear, I'm fine, but now she's speaking with the cadence of that mother computer brain from, like, four issues ago. And she's got this, like, heads-up display that looks like her as well. So, yeah, she's now infected by the mother computer. It sucks that it took me this long to really remember all their names because, you know, it's canceled next issue. But, like, I'm getting it. So, I like this. I think it's a solid enough thing, but it does feel really rushed. And I wonder if they had a longer thing planned out when they started this last issue. And then they were like, oh, crap, we really got it. Like, we got to pick up the pace on this. So they just kind of condensed everything down into one thing. Because the fact that the last issue, all it had was the tease of Ma this man named Matteo Bischoff is behind it. But no one knows who that is. And But he killed one of the team members. That seems like something that's going to stretch at least, like, six issues minimum. But now they got three. So... Yeah, it feels a little bit rushed, but I do like it. I do like all the ways that it's handling it. And it does just feel like a high-impact, super-action, like, go, 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 Michael Bay speed sort of book. And I like that. I think it's a fine thing for this particular book because it is literally just a bunch of gun-toting action stars. That's literally all they are. So, yeah, I'm going to give this a 7. I think it's very good at what it is. If this were any other book and it moved this quickly, I would probably criticize it more. But because it is such an action-heavy book, the fact that they're just running guns so quickly, I'm down with it. <laughs>